11.3 in math 30-1 is one of the trickier lessons we do all year. And it's something called the, the binomial expansion theorem. And really what that is, is it allows us to expand a binomial to some power of, uh, you know, on that binomial. So this shows the expansion of x plus y to the power of 4. We'd have 1x to the power of 4 plus 4x cubed y plus 6x squared y squared plus 4xy cubed plus 1y to the 4. Now, that would not be fun to expand, right? That's x plus y times x plus y times x plus y times x plus y times x plus y. That's a bit of a bummer. So what we can actually look at is I want to show you the, the pattern. So what they have in this table, and I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger so we can see it a little bit easier because I'm going to identify a few patterns, is they have a bunch of different, sorry about the herky-jerkiness of this. They have a few different binomials. Oh, this Board. Um, and they're showing the expansion over here. So if I had x plus y to the power of zero, I would just have the number one, right? Because anything to the power of zero is one. But if I have x plus y to the power of one, I have one x plus one y. Now, I would like to do something in these terms, though, is that if I do have, you know, one x and one y, you could also identify that this first term is one x to the power of one times y to the power of zero. And then I'm going to write this back term as one x to the power of zero times y to the power of one. And the reason why I think that's important is every single final term contains x to the power of zero, and every single initial term contains y to the power of zero. And the reason why that's so important to see is that there's a pattern happening with the exponents, with the exponents. I said exponents were there. Um, if we look at x, it starts with the same power as was on the binomial. So because we had x plus y cubed, we started with 1x cubed, but then the powers of x reduce by 1 as we go forward, right? We have x cubed, then we have x squared, then we have x to the power of 1, then I have x to the power of 0. And the opposite is happening with the exponent on the y. I have y to the power of 0, then y to the power of 1, then 2, then 3. Now, there's one other particular or peculiar pattern that's happening here. The coefficients on each of those terms are actually determined by combinations. Because what's really happening when we expand these binomials is a bunch of different you know, combinations, and it's a combination because the order of multiplication doesn't matter. There's a bunch of different ways to get x cubed times y. I could multiply x by x squared y. I could multiply x squared by xy. I could multiply x cubed by y. All of those would mean the same thing. And those coefficients are actually determined by a combination. Now, what makes this a little bit tricky is the rows of Pascal's triangle are actually, they start with the same number as in the exponent. So I just want to show that this would be in the expansion of x plus y to the power of 0. So it's 0 choose 0. This is x plus y to the power of 1. So it started as 1 choose 0, then 1 choose 1. Here we have x plus y squared, and we get... Oh, a little bit off there. Two choose zero, two choose one, and so on. Now, the, the reality is that there is a particular form for this, and I want to give it to you now. This is on your formula sheet, but if you had some x plus some y to the power of n, what we can say is that a term in the expansion, and we call that term k plus 1, would be n choose k times whatever x is to the power of n minus k times whatever y is to the power of k. Now, what confuses students about this is that k is changeable. We change k throughout. And the reason that we're able to do that is because k is just a means to an end. If we make k 0, we find term 1. And I'm going to write this underneath. In fact, I'm going to pick a particular expansion. Let's say I had x plus y to the power of 4. What I could do, and, and really what we're doing here is we're using combinations. We know that x plus y to the power of 4, if we go back to the triangle in the previous, um, I'm going to put that the number of terms total is equal to whatever n is plus 1. So because in the expansion of x plus y to the power of 4, I would have 4 plus 1 total terms. Now, bear with me here. I want to do the combinations first. So if we looked at those terms, my four terms, if I look at term one, I'm just going to put underneath the k is equal to zero. So my combination would be four, which is n, choose the k value, which is zero. And we'll fill in the other part of the term. I'm going to get to it in a second here. If I wanted to find term two, I would make k equal to one. It's always one less than the term. That means that term two would be four, choose one. And then again, we're going to have something in that bracket. I'll deal with that in a second. Um, if I looked at term three, I would make k equal to two. I would have four choose two. Add that multiplied again onto something. Now, the way that we get that something 
is this back end of that form, this right here. Now, because we're using x plus y, x is x, y is y, that's no problem. So in the first term, I made k equal to 0 for this question, n is equal to 4. So it's going to be x to the power of, well, n is 4, we made k 0. So x to the power of 4 minus 0, and we would have y to the power of 0. Then we would have x to the power of 4 minus 1, and y to the power of 1. Then we would have x to the power of 4 minus 2, and y to the power of 2. Now, what we could do in this case is we could actually, and we will do this, we'll practice this in the notes, 4 choose 0 is 1, and then we would just have x to the power of 4. 4 choose 1 is 4, then I would have x cubed times 1, and then we would see that pattern continuing until on the other end I would have 4 times xy cubed plus 1 times y to the power of 4. Now, I've written out, you know, the, the two back end terms. Let's go back to that expansion. And what we see if we have x plus y to the power of 4 is this line right here. Now, you could brute force x to the power of 1, 2, 3, 4, you know, even 5 if you really wanted to. But what if it's x plus y to the power of 50? You are never going to want to have to multiply 50 factors together. So the binomial expansion theorem actually gives us the ability to find specific terms in the expansion of polynomials. And I'll show this forum right here. And I said the expansion of polynomials previously. It's the expansion of binomials. Um, it allows us to talk about those terms. And the actual form that you get on your formula sheet is this one right here. And I think it's presented a little bit better. Sorry, this is the best one right here. So term k plus 1 is equal to n choose k times x to the power of n minus k times y to the power of k. And we're going to use that expansion theorem in a variety of ways. Um, but the focus is going to be on the ability to find a specific term in the expansion of a binomial.